Hi guys, this is Leela. Welcome to my channel Leela Webdev. In this video, we will learn what is a container. In the previous videos, we have learned about the uh, hypervisor and also the limitations on the virtual machine and all those things we have seen it, right? Now, in this video, we will learn about what is a container. So, let's proceed. So, now the container is a simple another process in your machine that has been isolated from all other process on the host machine. So it may be looking somewhat uh, difficult or somewhat confusing. So I will read it again. Container is a simple another process in your machine that has been isolated from all other process on the host machine. Host machine means here it is a physical server and it has been isolated. The process and all those things will be the container will have a process ID and that process ID will be completely isolated from the all other process on the host machine. So let's try to understand this one. To understand this, let's say that we have a physical server and on that physical server means so the host machine we are having or bare metal server we are having and on that I have installed we have installed some operating system. So any operating system let's say and I am running some applications like app 1, app 2 and so on. So these are all the uh, apps I am using. So now you know that even in an operating system so when you are running particular applications so now these particular applications can talk to each other. So how can these stuff uh, particular applications can talk to each other through the process ID of app one will have one process ID and app two will have one process ID and app one and app two will talk to each other using the process ID. The particular process ID which is created for this application can talk to this particular process ID of another application and vice versa. So the applications can talk to each other with their particular process IDs and container is just, in, just nothing but a, another process. So that means it is an another process container which is running inside of it. Okay. So inside or inside it means inside the operating system. So if I create a boundary for app one. So if I create a boundary for app one and this process is called as a container. So if a container, if a, if a boundary has been created for the app one means then it is called as a container. And now the container will have a particular process and how we can create a boundary using the using the um, how we can create a container for the app application means using containerization technologies like kernel namespace and the C groups which I will explain you in the later uh, here only. So but you need to understand that. So let's assume that uh, I will be going to the paint. Let's take the new one. Alt F new one. So here we are having the host operating system. Okay. Here I am having the host operating system. And in this host operating system, let's say I'm having the app one, app two and app three like this. We are having some particular applications we are having. Now this one will have a process ID and this one will have a process ID and this one will have a process ID and these process IDs will talk to each other. But if I create a boundary for this one, so now this boundary will have a process. So this boundary will have a process and this one will have a process boundary and this one will have a boundary inside this boundary application is present now this boundary is called as in container and how we can create this boundary is nothing but using the containerization technologies like kernel namespace and also c group which i will try to explain you so this is one thing so this container inside will have the properties only related to this particular application which are isolated so now when I am what I am trying to do so this container so now this boundary this container will have its application and the process ID will be belong to only to this container and which is isolated and now this application is isolated to here and this this application is isolated and this application is isolated. So that is what I am trying to explain you. We can also say like this container will have only libraries and binaries which need OS and the application to be running without any kernel packages. So here I am telling that this is an another definition. So if you do if you don't understand this definition means so here container will have only libraries and binaries which need OS and the application to be running without any kernel packages. Actually in Linux operating system. So actually in Linux operating system we need kernel packages to talk to the hardware. So the kernel packages is needed to talk to the hardware because as a human being as an application cannot understand the binary language. So kernel will help you to convert human readable language to the machine level language and vice versa. That is the reason why we use the kernel. Containers doesn't have this particular kernel. So that is one thing which I want to explain you. 
containers will have only libraries and binaries which are needed to run your operating system and the application that's it so the containers the boundaries which we have uh, understood so we'll have only the operating the nature libraries and binaries needed to run your operating system and also the application the kernel related task will be done by your container containerization tool not by your container that's the reason why containers are lightweight so that means containers will have only and libraries and the binaries which are needed to run your operating system and application the kernel related task will be done your by containerization tool not by your container that's the reason why containers are lightweight so here another one is isolation leverages the kernel namespaces and c group features that has been in the linux for a long time so this kernel namespaces and the c isolation so i told you right the container will be isolated to each other so how this isolation will be done is through the kernel namespaces and the c group features so this this these are already present in the linux for a long time so we have discussed that container are nothing but a boundary and these boundaries are created by the feature called kernel namespaces and the c group in the starting of the video we have discussed about this one so kernel namespaces and the c groups by using this particular feature which is existing in the linux operating system from long back now the containerization tool have adopted this particular functionality they have not designed this functionality so now in order to make a container and all the things so now this containerization tools like uh, docker and everything so they will be using this technology to uh, in order to create the container so they haven't designed this new functionality this functionality is already present in the linux long before only so we will discuss this in the detail later for now understand that using this kernel namespace and the c group functionality containers are able to isolate each other although containers are running in a single host so this is one thing which you need to understand container virtualize the operating system instead of hardware and more portable and efficient containers do not virtualize your hardware so who will virtualize your hardware there is nothing but a hypervisor so it is virtualizing your operating system which means the process id network ipc utc these all the softwares will be uh, virtualized by your con uh, containers the hypervisor what we have discussed is nothing but its hardware virtualization now containers are nothing but virtualizing the software operating system so that is the major difference between your containers and the virtual machines so docker has worked to make these capabilities approachable and easy to use why we are talking more about the docker is when we come across the containers because we are creating the containers or managing the containers or building the images creating our custom images creating the repositories or pushing to the repositories whatever the things we will be doing in this sessions so it is much simpler in docker compared to any other tool so this is the diagram which i want to tell you so here you will be having your physical system in this physical system you will be having the host operating system and in the host operating system at the top you will be having containerization tool that is nothing but here i have shown you the docker and in this docker we will be having the containers like app a app b app c like this so these are this is the diagram for the containerized applications if you look at the diagram there is a docker and the docker will be installed on the operating system so that is what i am explaining you and the docker is installed on the top of the operating system it is not like a type 1 hy hypervisor so type 1 hypervisor means hardware hypervisor it is not like that one without having any operating system you can't install the docker and docker is like portable imagine instead of docker you can install any other tool just i am telling the docker this docker will be installed on any operating host system and then you will start creating the containers every container will have its own application related process that are running inside it the resource what is consumed by your con container will be used by your application so here every container will have its own application let's say that one container can have nginx server and another container will have the mysql and another container will have the tomcat so like this whatever the things you want you can do it so you can create the small scale applications like cache server or anything the containers you can do it as well as the large scale applications also you can create using the container like hadoop big data like that also you can create it and here i have told you that in the virtualization or something like in the virtual machines so the, the resource allocation is not dynamic whereas in the container the resource allocation is dynamic so that means for example if you have created a container with a 0.5 uh, core cpu and uh, 100 gb 100 mb of ram means automatically so for example uh, if the application consumes more uh, um, resource or anything means without using the command line tools and all those things automatically it will contact the docker and the, here the docker the, the application will contact the docker and the docker 
will re will allocate the resources to this one if the host system has the resource available so this is uh, that is that is why i can say we can say that container is uh, resource allocation is dynamic whereas the high, uh, virtual machines resource allocation is not dynamic so that's it so what are the containerization tools we have so now we understood what is a container so i hope that you have a clear understanding about the container and what are the containerization tools we have so we have open source and also the enterprise tools the first one is an lxc or lxd the, uh, so the older version is lxc and the newer version right now is lxd so this is the first one which uh, uh, which we used to create the containers this particular tool is not popular why because it is only available in the linux operating system and the uh, another containerization tools we have is the creo and rkt container d docker so here i am explaining about the docker engine and the docker enterprise podman runc so these are the different types of uh, what i can say is containerization tools available in the uh, for creating the containers so here if you try to see except docker everything is an open source so directly you can read the documentation and you can create the containers directly uh, you can create the uh, containers in the operating system whereas the docker we have two versions that is one is community edition and another is uh, enterprise edition the community edition is an open source whereas the enterprise enterprise edition is a licensed one so it's a commercial we need to use it so that's what about the docker so in docker we have two versions enterprise edition and the community edition so community edition is a freeware whereas the enterprise edition is a licensed one so in the next video what i will try to explain you is why we need to use the docker and what is the use of docker and advantage of docker and all those things let's try to discuss in the next video hope you understood about this container and the containerization tool and how the container works in the host operating system so if you have any doubts or any suggestions please post the comments below to this video and if you like this video please do support me by subscribing to my channel thank you